Hello everyone watching, so glad to have you here. So, the story goes, some time ago uh, I ordered the cheapest possible neck from Amazon and uh, I got it through mail. It was badly beat up because it was unprotected for shipping. Uh, so I complained to the seller, got, they, they got in touch very very quickly and uh, offered me a partial refund uh, for all the damage that uh, emerged during the transport. So I was quite happy because I wanted to put the guitar back as quickly as possible and I wanted to sew the neck out before uh, I knew if I'm gonna have to send it back or what would be the story but uh, luckily it ended up very very quickly just another day I knew that the neck is here to stay so I started working on it I put a uh, set of tuners uh, that I got and uh, these are guitar tuning packs branded tuners famous guitar tuning pack brand uh, there was a tiny little little cardboard insert that said that these are the finest so I believe them so uh, they were like eight quid or something so whenever you need guitar tune tuners get the you know guitar tuning pegs brand you know because they are the finest that's what the box said so it must be true uh, anyway <laughs> they turned out to be really 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 okay uh, and uh, I started building the body this time it's uh, Again, it's pine. This thing turned out to be very, very light. I'm really, really happy. Uh, and uh, I used uh, and this, uh, I basically used two strips of wood for it. So the overall cost was around nine pounds, which is like $13 for the material. Uh, I spliced together uh, the white, white parts, uh, which were like, uh, inch and a half square square um, strip of wood uh, and uh, interleaved it with a with a half inch one 
so it's not visible at all on the top or back but I'll switch the view maybe but the sides are actually quite nice and you can see that this is like a sandwiched narrow and wide parts and the idea was that I wanted to have it again quite rough in the looks very down home with all the knots with all the imperfections and also here on the sides this is basically how the wood turned out I didn't put any filler on anything so here you can also see that it's made of strips and possibly the trickiest part to make it work was to figure out the neck pocket because this neck actually uh, is a little bit smaller it's like vintage fender neck so the heel is one and a half mil smaller than everything else that you can get like replacement necks that would fit squire or whatever else uh, so Initially, I wanted to put it in a, into a different body that I had, but this neck was so loose that I'd have to reshape it and it just wouldn't look good, it wouldn't fit anything. Uh, it also wouldn't fit my pig guards that I had lying around. I wanted to put this solid, solid black pig guard, but turns out that this section in here doesn't cover properly the neck pocket. So I'll just have to make a custom one, but right now I just settled on not putting the pig guard at all uh, but anyway after some work that I had to put uh, because usually when I put this kind of guitar together which is from random parts I string it up to see how it behaves under the tension of the strings uh, and why am I talking about this because having this kind of knowledge helps deal with all the guitar problems that you might encounter the possibly the easiest way to get to know your guitars is to build one and learn from everything that comes in a way so uh, learning how to work with the center line with all the dimensions what can go wrong uh, how tiny the little inaccuracies inaccuracies in neck pocket and in the angle might affect action and all these tiny little things I was aware of them because I worked on my guitars for years and I wanted to I wanted them to be as playable as possible so it was a little bit uh, different this time because I could set my expectations I knew how I wanted this thing to end up and also I wanted to make sure what I can achieve with this particular setup uh, so if the neck is not too precisely cut uh, if there is a, some twist in the neck pro probably it will mean that I'll have to work harder on leveling the frets and trying to work around all these quicks uh, and because this neck has like a very very nice very slim profile it's it feels perfect I mean it's it's really great in terms of shape and dimensions they nailed it what they didn't nail uh, was well everything else pretty much I mean the the finish required some additional work some polishing some cleaning and the fret work was pretty much uh, well I'd say for the price I wouldn't expect absolutely anything and uh, I was right <laughs> I mean the frets are here and that's about it I had to level them, I had to do the fret ends, I had to work on the sticky sharp edges uh, and the most, mo most uh, important thing was that once I strung it and put it all together and wired the electronics uh, this thing was completely unplayable I mean there was absolutely no way to make this thing make any sound because not, not not because of the shape or bow because the truss rod is working perfectly in this thing although the neck is very thin so right now I put uh, 12 to 56 set that I had lying around usually I put tens right now I just don't bother with putting any heavier strings there's not really I, I, I don't see any benefit of, of having 
have your strings right now, although I experimented with all the gauges there are. Uh, and uh, this, this, this thing under the string tension just wouldn't, wouldn't behave at all. Uh, no matter how high I put the action, there were some low frets. Uh, the heel part of the neck was quite, uh, quite elevated compared to the rest of the neck. Uh, so I did the necessary fret leveling and crowning. So this is a great lesson in patience because usually I want to finish it as quickly as possible. I want to have all this mess already done and dusted and all the tools away. But I spent some time on this particular one uh, and it turned out really, really great, surprisingly well for this kind of for this kind of construction. And I'm really happy with it. Although it's there are still a couple of things that I have to um, iron out. Uh, there are things that I would change out possibly uh, once once I will restring it because I see absolutely no point in taking it apart a couple of times because I enjoy playing it I want to play it as much as I can so until these strings wear off completely uh, I'll restring it with standard 10 to uh, 46 and then I'll deal with tiny little quirks that I want to have uh, and to, 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 to get done uh, so, so it's going to be absolutely perfect and uh, first thing is to going in tiny little bushings of the tuning keys because they are they are not perfectly aligned because the holes for the tuners are a little bit oversized so I'll just glue them in and they'll stick there it's it's just for aesthetics it doesn't change anything this thing stays in tune really well uh, for what it is and uh, so, so this is just a tiny little quirk and I'll possibly get the neck pocket a little bit deeper so that uh, j just again just to have a more range of adjustment at the bridge because right now uh, the the neck is a little bit a little bit sticking too high sticking too proud from the body uh, although I tried to keep the dimensions to what's published out there and again I built this body having just the shape template uh, so it's basically shaped by hand by by eye but uh, it took me around one afternoon to glue all the woods together to shape the body to stain it and basically build the whole guitar from going to home base and buying all the wood up to a complete body it was one afternoon then uh, I, I had to wait for the bridge uh, to be shipped so it was just a couple of days and once I got the bridge I cut the uh, the pickup cavity uh, and and that's pretty much it I'm really really happy it was a quick and, and painless process and it was just about tweaking everything to, to, to make it to make it work and uh, well how does it sound this is that's 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 the key thing um, I got the this pickup from uh, from Croatia. The company is called Q Pickups, and uh, they're like a, they are they are a new kid on the block. And I see that there are a couple of companies popping uh, popping up from time to time, and they're offering hand wound pickups. And there is a huge variety, huge range of different choices, just different options. One is from Croatia. There is one from Ukraine. But uh, shipping times right now are very, very long. I waited like a month for this to get shipped. But it's, it's really nice looking. So it has this vintagey character. It has, a, it has proper waxed wires like old pickups used to have. Uh, it has a little rope uh, around the coil. Uh, what it doesn't have is a, a little copper plate at the bottom it's so, so this is more like a modern thing but this is alnico 2 so proper proper magnets that uh, i would expect and um in the specification of this pickup the idea is that it's meant to be very hot so it's 13k um 13k of passive resistance of the coil so it's it's pretty much as high as you can get but it doesn't translate to the output signal it doesn't mean that this pickup is uh, extremely loud it's still as uh, i'd say well the tone rider 
uh, Tone Rider um, hot vintage thing that I that I have in the other guitar, or the Japanese Fender um, single coil. They are pretty much in the same ballpark, and they have a vastly different uh, resistance of the coil. So I would say that this is this is not the deciding factor in the output signal but it translates to tonality and this is actually what i really like about this thing because it's not a bright pickup i have this very very odd thing about uh about telecasters that i love their look i just love the way they feel but i'm not that great fan of of the uh later later single coil pickups that they came with and they're a, a bit too bright for what I do musically. I uh, I like this sort of round and soft sound of, uh, of a lap steel, pedal steel guitar and original Broadcaster and Esquire, they actually came with a lap steel pickup in them. So it was this huge sounding dark single coil and uh, later it seems thank you so much Les it's, uh, it's really it's uh, it's really generous of you thank you so much uh, so I uh, kind of hit the jackpot just I, I just ordered this pickup. Okay, it's it's cheap. It was twenty eight pounds, so it's around thirty five dollars for a hand wound pickup. I mean, let's let's compare it for a uh, for Tone Rider, which is like a box standard thing that comes with uh, with that, that comes with Squires, and I mean, it's a very good pickup for the price. But it's not Samer Duncan, definitely. Uh, so thirty pounds is for Tone Rider, twenty eight for a hand wound. Thing made by, uh, by, by by guys in Croatia, so I thought it was worth it, 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 it was worth the risk to see how this thing is gonna work, and uh, and I'm really really glad that the, that this thing has the singing quality, and uh, I don't I don't feel like I want to change anything. I don't uh, on most Telecasters. Uh, when I get this this a little bit too much of a of a top end ring, uh, or a bit of a fret ringing that is that I mean it's a, it, that it's kind of built in. I mean there's a metal on metal contact of fret and string, but uh, I I use tone control a lot for different things. But here, like the initial sound with with both uh, with both controls open, it just does exactly what I what, what I wanted to do. happy accident and uh, uh, a little little DIY activity because I don't consider myself to be a guitar tech or builder I just I just like working on guitars I like to make them work uh, and uh, most of the stuff I mean there behind me these are pretty much uh, all my guitars right now so top three uh, here Orange Gretsch. I mean, this is this is my uh, well. I wouldn't say it's a Sunday guitar, but it's. I don't take it out anymore, really. I mean, unless this is like like a like a jazz gig, nice venue, and as we all know from last March, there was no gigs anyway. So this thing hangs on the wall. I I play it at home, definitely. Of course, it's a great guitar. I uh, absolutely love it. It's 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 not for everything, but it does really really great what it does. Uh, then here on the left there is a blonde Strat. Uh, 
that is also a great one. I think I did a video using it. It's it's a modern Stratocaster. It's a 1997 um, Ash American Standard, and uh, it's also it's 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 a it's a great Strat. It's although I prefer vintage looking ones, but at the same time they have certain quirks that I feel like I need to fight, uh, which usually the neck radius seven and a quarter. Uh, requires quite high action for the bends that I do, so it's mm, it's 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 not perfect. It's less than ideal. I had a I had a great feeling, great looking fifty four Japanese Strat that I uh, sold to a dear friend of mine, and uh, it was a great guitar, and uh, it was uh, actually it was the one that I that that, that, that like it was my favorite Strat that I ever had. Uh, but uh, I just I just didn't need it at this point, so so yeah, I uh, I sold to him. And the middle one, that's the curiosity, because uh, this is uh, 1982 Aria Pro 2 RS Special V. Japanese names, long names. They 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 knew how to market stuff. Uh, so this thing was only for Japanese market, and it's from Matsumoku factory. It's absolutely perfect in, in in every way in terms of build quality it was just insane how could they roll so much about a guitar that it was built to such a high standards it's also quite a weird one because it has tiny vintage frets but is like a modern vibe in terms of aesthetics but in general it's it's just a strat uh, but this particular thing um, it's the same model and same color that I had um, since I was, I think I was 14. It was, the, 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 this was my first professional guitar that I had. And uh, I just, by pure nostal nostalgia, I wanted to have something like that. Uh, and I was able to find one in Netherlands through, well, Magic of Internet and, uh, and Aria Pro 2 fan groups. And it was just like, well, Someone posted a photo and it was like, oh, I used to have one like this, but it was a red one. And a gentleman named Ben just popped in and was like, I got one for sale. And and I think it was like 200 pounds or something, which is a steal for this kind of guitar. And and for something that is 30 year, 38 years old, it was in great shape. There are just a just couple of dings, but it plays great and I'm really happy to have it. But... But these are the guitars that I don't really play that much. I mean, it's like from time to time. My workhorses are everything else. So the Glary that I basically got for free to do the review, well, I put some work into it. I swapped the pickups. I work on frets. I refinished the neck up to my liking. I reshaped the headstock. And it was a guitar that I, for for past couple of months I use it to like like exclusively with jazz band and with with, with everything else it just does what, what what I wanted to do again out of the box it was okay for a beginner but just by putting some some elbow grease and and, and adjusting uh, adjusting all this stuff to my liking it just turned out to be a great guitar uh, then I built another Pinecaster, and once I put it together, I couldn't put it down. It was it was absolutely great. I felt inspired by this guitar, because this thing was just a couple of planks of wood in a you know in a, in, a, in a Home Depot market, and just like 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 one day later, I turned it into a playing instrument, and I was I was really uh, I was really inspired by the fact that uh, it just takes so little so little effort and some maybe thoughts and measurements ahead but you can you can turn it into something uh so, something that inspires you to 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 make music because that's that's what it's all about really and it's pretty much the same thing with this because uh, when i did uh, the previous pinecaster it played great right, right of the box because uh i was able to get locally i used the neck that was in a great shape, so I, I just bolted it together, soldered it in the pickup, and was like, good to go. Like, it's 
it's just too good to be true, you know. Uh, and this thing, I thought it would be a major disappointment. I thought that it would be something like an, well, may, may, maybe I'll keep it to, I don't know, for alternate tunings or anything, but no, it actually turned out to be really, really great. It required more work, more of a different work than I expected, uh, although obviously I, I, I had to do the, you know, fret leaven, fret, fret polishing and, and everything else. Uh, but uh, I'm really surprised that, that 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 I could bring it to to you know to this kind of level when it's just just great sounding instrument. So uh, I'll maybe play a couple of things, and uh, I'll I'll talk a bit how what I really like about it. <clears throat> so for, first thing is that uh, again I don't have a neck pickup on purpose because I want to have plenty of room to for, for my for my picking hand to work on so <laughs> In terms of luck of the bridge pickup, um, because this is not a bright humbucker, really glad about that. And of course, I have a I have a tone control, and the range is about well, this all all the way down. thing that I really like uh, anyway uh, there is a there's so so much in terms of tonality that you can get out of this thing uh, mainly because I treat the, 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 the whole idea of having just a single pickup as a creative limitation uh, at this point because playing guitar is being a part of a closed feedback loop I hear what I play and my playing is readjusted to achieve what what I want to hear. Uh, and having just a single pickup uh, opens up this opportunity to, to discover how much is going on in terms of of the you know the mythical tone in hands. I mean it's I don't really believe that tone is enhanced. Tone is in the head. Tone is about decision making. It's making right decisions and reacting in a certain way and having certain expectations. Uh, 
which puts me in a, a bit odd situation in terms of gear because uh, basically I don't really care what the guitar is because I can I can explore its limitations and just work around them I need to have a good amp that's that's it and by good uh, I mean the one that is not broken so it's not not too much to ask and I can do my job I mean that's 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 all I need uh, a lead decent amp that is loud enough to cope with the drummer and uh, big enough for the venue and a guitar that is again not broken and it, nowadays it's so easy to get something that is not broken it's it's, it's just stunning uh, so let's 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 have a look, look at the uh, at the tones and at the sounds that that you can get with a single pickup <clears throat> so uh, first of all uh, this thing is strung with 12s 12s are a little bit less jungly than I would expect, so this is more like a limiting factor. But in terms of, of playing with a pick, I can go from very light touch, very soft sound. foster every single note and have a complete control over what's going on uh, for example right now I played I played sleepwalk one of my favorite tunes and yes I can play giant steps but I prefer to play sleepwalk uh, anyway this is this is uh, there's something very special about this tune because I, I loved it forever and turns out that uh, whenever I play this is the most requested thing and I, I, I never expected it. It's, 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 it's the one that I love playing. I always play it differently. But it has a, it has a brilliant, sweet, strong melody, and it's something uh, that works really great with the audience. It, it connects with the audience. I mean, what, <laughs> what more could you ask for? Uh, so I can play my, my uh, play my guts out on this tune, uh, depending who I play for. Uh, but my my approach is that I play almost every single note of the melody from b bending from half step below. So it's not the, the the melody is very simple. I mean, you can play with with one finger. That's not where the music is. Uh, music is in the voice that you put around this melody, and there are many different ways. So, uh, Hank Marvin did it on the Strat with tremolo with a whammy bar, so he put his personal voice on it. Brian Setzer he reharmonized it, so it was the melody was part of the chords. kind of in between approach because I love the original Santo and Johnny version which was played on a lap steel and I'm kind of aiming for this particular sound and uh, part of the lap steel sound is that there that, that the pitch is not perfectly fixed you approach the pitch by with a bar so you need to listen and readjust it slightly so I do it by playing the melody like it's in B major instead of C major, like it's a half step below, but I bend every note up to a target, uh, to a target pitch. So I'm going to split screen maybe. Okay, so 
uh, what are you doing here? This is C. Instead of playing C and the G, even with even with vibrato, it's kind of not the same thing because it's like a it's 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 like an inbuilt feature of a lap steel that the note is from no note is approach from below. So this is my C but bent from B natural, and this is my G from F sharp, and then it's F G and A flat. So the idea is that I'm stretching possibilities of a guitar as such because the bridge is fixed. I don't have a whammy bar, but I'm pretty much replacing the function of the of the whammy bar that pulls the pitch down. So this is this is basically my my lowered note. This is my C. I can lower it just like diving with the whammy bar. I can also do a smooth controlled vibrato. I can time my vibrato. I can I I can put the pulls of the tune in it. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, so whenever I have a I have an interval of a major second, two frets, I prefer to bend from one note to another to get this very, very smooth and gentle. Trick originally, uh, originally Santo Farina did l the this lap steel artificial harmonic where you, uh, you, you on lap steel you, you use thumb pick and and uh, finger picks. I play my lap steel just with a thumb pick. So I have fingernails and uh, I don't like switching. If you have thick fingers, they tend to press. Uh, on my fingertips, they turn blue. Not not fun at all. Uh, anyway, there is a there, there is a cool trick of getting an artificial harmonic with your finger and the thumb pick underneath, and then it's an octave harmonic, and you can slide the tone bar, and it goes smoothly up. And on a guitar, it's really really hard to execute, uh, but the way I like to emulate this sound is just going 12 frets higher so this is my 21st 22nd would be on the edge 23rd would be somewhere here 24th is about here so i can check so here are my harmonics my octave harmonics and what i do in here is i fret on 12th fret because i want to achieve this sound so this is a bend from 12th to 14th and then 1st and 2nd string on 12th fret. And I want to put it an octave higher and because I don't have 24 frets, I do it with my artificial harmonics. So it's a nice gentle sound again. Uh, there's another way of, of, of doing it, uh, if you're lucky enough to have a Telecaster, you can do the behind the, behind the nut band. So what I'm doing in here...
So I'm just bending my G string whole step up. It doesn't take too much force, uh, depending on the string gauge. This guitar is hard to play right now with these strings, but I try to keep my <laughs> face straight, but I'm fighting it really. Uh, but I don't mind because it sounds great, so I, d I don't really care. Uh, what matters is what, you know, the, the, the sounds that come out of it. Uh, not how much, uh, nobody cares how hard uh, you work as a player, <laughs> so that's why heavy string gauges don't really make any sense. Uh, in the context, nobody really hears the difference, and uh, yeah, <laughs> there, is, there is no point. I mean, if you, if you need it for lower tunings, that's cool, but for standard tuning, yeah, well, yeah, 11, 11s for, for, for shorter scale, 10s, 9s, whatever. Um, I'm happy with anything. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's that, that's that's the cool cool another sound that you get from something that's just a plunk of wood and a single pickup. Uh, and uh, what I what I also like um, in terms of of playing obvious things in a in a bit less obvious way. Apart from well, uh, in a um, you know with 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 all the bands and artic articulation, but it's more about uh, the the ideas of of getting different different tones, different sounds. So of course, what the picking hand does and how far from the bridge it changes everything, obviously. So. position as like like having a mouth attached to the guitar uh, so this, this this is more towards so it's like like ch changing the you know formant formant content of of your guitar tone and again it's it's all there it, usually we take it for granted we just pick where it's or it's comfortable, but this is this is another choice. This is something that is really, really great tool, great sh tone shaping tool. That's where it happens. Uh, so, so I can I can go for for a very bright sound. <laughs> Like phaser, like a, like a stomp box, changing the phase of the signal. It 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 the, the tonal content is very very different, uh, and uh, also this, the, the, this this kind of picking technique comes a little bit from the classical world, from stringed instruments, uh, because it is believed uh, that in the harmonic ser series. Uh, where we have uh, basically root, root, fifth, root, third, fifth, and flat seven. This flat seven is not entirely in tune, but whenever we hit a string, all these harmonics sound at the same time. So everything that we have in here, when when I touch the string. In different spots, and I get all these all these notes. They ring simultaneously, and they're part of the tonality. And depending on which harmonic is amplified and which one is cancelled due to pickup position and picking hand, it basically results in a different sound. And stringed instruments and even pianos, because this seventh harmonic. Uh, basically lies in, a, in it, it has its its peak um, I mean it's so, so, sorry it's it's not of the wave in every 
single one seventh of the string. So w w you, you can, you can. So it's somewhere in here. Uh, in general, it is believed that it's better to avoid it because it it causes you know unpleasant sounding thing. So when you pluck a note at this point, this harmonic is going to be a little bit a little bit attenuated. So that's uh, why, for example, on a grand piano, the hammer hammer strikes the string around this point, around one seventh of the string. Or a multiple of, you know, two seven, three sevens. When when technically it's it's just easier to achieve, and it's pretty much the same with bowing string instruments. If you want to get rid of this top sound that that is being believed not to be uh, something harmonious to to the tonality of the instruments, that's where you bow. Because if you put your bow in there, the string won't be excited up and down or sideways. It's going to be dumpened. It's just just like doing this, right? Although in this particular case, I'm going to get over the fundamental. But again, it's it's these are technicalities, and the string vibrates in all the all the dimensions, up and down and sideways and and around and depending on on the harmonics. It's really cool to see in the slow motion what the string does, but it's quite complex. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, this is this is the tone shaping part of 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 of, uh, of a single string, right? So. Thing that I can I uh, that I can do if I'm gonna reach for a particular sound I can change position and uh, that's where the oh, that's my heating system that's my thermostat kicking in because I, my speaker is not grounded properly Woohoo! anyway um, what, what, what I like doing is relying on the knowledge of the fretboard because we have a matrix of notes and they repeat they're repeating a certain sequence, right? So this is my top E, my E on second string, on third string, on fourth, and on fifth. So all these E's, they have different tonal quality. They are very, very different E's. They have same fundamental pitch, but they have very different harmonic content, right? This one is rounder, this one is dual, this one this one is dead on arrival, right? And slightly sharp, but that's my fault. Because uh, I need to, I need, uh, I need to get my uh, intonation properly. But so these are these are all E's, but they're very very different. So depending on what I'm going for if I want to have a bright sound I'll play lower on the neck so a little bit rounder tone and it's like someone's been gagged here again towards sound right it is a more Is that whenever we have a fourth between the strings, the shape of the melody is the same. It's uh, something that bass players are cheating a lot <laughs> because they have all fourths. So whatever pattern that they play in this, in all the keys, the intervals basically have the same setting, right? On guitar, it's a bit trickier for certain reasons. But uh, anyway. Uh I can pick and choose whatever tonality I want to achieve with shifting positions, and that's that's the creative side, the creative side of of working on the sound. And uh, something that I've been told many many years ago, it was it was a funny thing that uh, I started uh, playing classical saxophone when I was thirteen years old. And the first thing that you that, that you practice on your horn 
is to get the tone right. So you spend weeks and weeks just playing long notes, working on, on the steady breath, on your diaphragm, on your apparatus to get a steady tone. And uh, the thing is that on a saxophone, you make the tone all the time. You, it's, 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 it's not like you press a key and you don't care because something will ring, right? You need to control your intonation and everything in between with, with your mouth, with your breath. And uh, <clears throat> a couple of years later, I've been told by my only guitar teacher, brilliant, brilliant avant-garde jazz player, uh, to practice long notes on a guitar. And although it didn't sound like a new concept to me, because I heard Steve Vai mentioning it at some point, I thought, well, there is a point in it. I mean, it's, it's, it's valid, there is something about that. But uh, before you reach the point where you have clear expectations of what you want and how you want to play certain things, uh, and your head is not in the right point, this exercise actually not necessarily will do anything for you, but, but right now I really appreciate practicing long, long notes on a guitar. Why? Because guitar is the most difficult instrument in terms of controlling the tone, really. You make it at all times, every time. Okay, you can say, well, on the saxophone it's also quite difficult to get a good tone on a clarinet or anything. Yes, but the, the thing is that as a guitar player, you have way more, more choices for what tone you go, right? So this is the C, and this is the C, and this is the C. I play them with different fingers, and my tactile response is different for, for even the same position, right? This is my C. This is my C as well, bent from, from, from a half step below. This is my C as well. So, in music notation, if I see a single note on a lower ledger line, which is a, which is a C note, right now I have to decide which one is it. Do I go for the quickest and the safest route? Or do I have a favorite spot when I, when I, when I for, reach for, like a, like a, like like an entry point that you know this is where I start from and once I work the tune out where am I going with that so I think it's 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 a great thing to work for a couple of minutes on long notes and see what what the possibilities are and learn the tone learn learn the tonality learn how open or how closed the, the tone is on, on, on a guitar. Or maybe there are some places on a guitar that just don't sound right. And you can think of avoiding these places or having your line played somewhere else, right? No matter whether you're improvising, soloing or reading. I mean, this, this thing applies like this is, this, this, this is a fund fundamental technique of, of the instrument, control, positive control of the instrument. Uh, so, Some of these notes will sustain more, some less. Some m may seem to be too bright. In certain positions of the neck on the thicker strings, the intonation may be off. So this, this is maybe like, you know, for certain situations it might work and for, for certain not necessarily. But this is where, where, where it comes to, to, to single notes and pro practicing long, long notes. And by practicing long notes, I mean really long and just letting it vibrate until it dies and at the same time listening to, to everything that, that, that goes on in the background because so, so, something may ring along with, the, with, with, with this note. So it also teaches the dampening technique, right? Especially with bands where we are running into, into neighboring strings with, with fingers. So right here it's not a problem, but when I release it, this thing will ring very softly, but it will, right? So I need to have certain so, so, some sort of strategy what I want to do to keep them quiet. 
So I work with my both picking hands and 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 fretting hand. So for example, right now I'm I'm holding these two with with my fingers, and I keep my soft so, soft part of my of my palm on top strings. So this this way, this one is isolated. It's, that's that's the only sound that I can get right now. It matters on 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 long notes, right? So when I play in a lyrical, very delicate way, I want to be as clear as possible, and I want to foster every note, and I want want this to be like like a you know impeccable in the you know in in in, in the most achievable way way under the circumstances uh, <clears throat> and uh, when I when I uh, play something more complex some lines that, that require string skipping or some some different intervals again playing something as simple I know first first five steps of, of, of a major scale, major scale uh, I can start with any finger on any of these C's right so uh, for example here with index finger I can play three notes on E string two on, on E. I can go with open strings. I can do mix and match. I can I can spread C and D and E on three strings, something that I love doing. Because it's a harp like sound. So it's fifth fret on third string, third fret on second string and open. And now I want to play F and G on also on a pair of strings and let them ring, let, let ring. So the way I do it is C, C, D, E, and then F on sixth fret of second string, and G on third fret of E string. And my picking hand basically plays plays rake sweep. three strings and two strings and I want the C to ring so again it's quite challenging to, to keep these notes ringing okay but this is aiming for, for, for one kind of sound very non guitar like sound right uh, which is which is which is okay I mean it's just it's just a different different thing right okay more conventional thing uh, from this C with pinky. So again, across the strings F and G. Here with the ring finger, with index. I can I can start with with middle finger and go to third string. There may be situation where it's just better this way. This is like a very very default from a from fifth fret. And from pinky here on on tenth fret of fourth. So very very different result from the same notes, right? So this is this is the part of of getting to know what guitar can do before we even start switching pickups and, and, and choosing you know tone controller or anything with the amp there's so much great stuff that can come out just by our decisions right and it's <laughs> Les, I'm so glad I mean that's the, the, that's a great thing you know it makes me think of 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 a of, of a certain of a certain um, concept that uh, basically everything everything uh, that's been ever played comes down to a series of notes that someone played having usually two hands and ten fingers 
with the exception of Django Reinhardt that played faster than anyone and it was insane and inspired and had a incredible ideas for beautiful soulful lines and he had only two working fingers uh, but it's a different story anyway uh, the idea is that we, we cannot learn everything but we can have a chunk here and chunk there and, and, and put our musical personality together by getting inspired uh, so um, basically, what what I put together these these uh, videos with finger picking with 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 a <laughs> okay. Uh, let's this this is a quite a, quite a valid question uh, because uh, that 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 uh, how how long how long will it take to become average? The trick is that it really depends who are you playing for. And I bet if you take one of the uh, one one of the basic rockabilly licks that I show and you go among guys that are like in their 18, 19 year old metal heads that shred and you do something like that and they'll have no bloody idea what you're doing. And I'm sure that you will impress them, no matter how simple it is. Because suddenly you're playing three parts at once, and it's like, what the hell? And I've seen it all the time. When it won't work? Well, when you enter a society of finger pickers, <laughs> and they're pushing the boundaries. I mean, it's really hard to tell. I mean, it's, you know, I, I don't consider myself to be a finger picker at all. I mean, I, I play with thumb pick and, 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 and fingers... And I and I comp I put it in a blues context and I used it in rockabilly trio for years, and then I just wanted to enhance a little bit, so I had to work out the method to to make it work for me. And because it was built from the ground up, I thought I would share it. But I think that you could if 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 you spend I don't know maybe half an hour every day after two months. You could pretty much nail it all. I mean, it's 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 not a complicated stuff. It just seems like there is a long way to 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 get the technicalities right. But the the true difficulty in all of the style. That's why we love the masters of the style. It's not what they do on a technical level. It's about their creativity of reaching that point. And that's why I don't really do covers because there are. Nine, eight, nine, ten year olds that sit through the tubs and they learn because they have great memory and they learn things very quickly. But none of these kids wrote this tune, right? And I, 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 I won't compete in a in in a discipline that I'm just not part of, right? Uh, so I have a very, very utilitarian idea of of, of of using this finger picking thing I mean it's whenever I play a gig and I need to deliver the part that's what I'm gonna do and uh, I think that you know it's 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 really hard to measure because you see average I mean average finger picker it's hard to t it's it's hard to tell really I mean uh, there's this a little bit false premises right now uh, that like there is a syllabus and curriculum for everything, especially for for musical instruments. And I believe that everyone learns and gets inspired in a different spot. And uh, I I've I've seen plenty of absolutely brilliant players that reach their mastery in the most weird way imaginable. Uh, so you could you could you could have a brilliant uh, brilliant finger pickers that were rock guys before, or heavy metal guys, or someone who came from a for, 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 from a I don't know Irish traditional guitar playing something that is absolutely some, something that I have absolutely no idea what it's all about. I mean, I can I I can play notes, but this is not like a 
not something that I that, that, that I grew with it's not you know it's it's not natural for me and in if, if you're in the right context with other players that are maybe competing or sharing just like in the very very beginning right uh, Chad Atkins had almost like a like a uh, like a desert island approach. I mean, he just practiced a lot. He was listening to the radio and tried to figure things out himself, right? And he reached certain aspects of a guitar that are absolutely brilliant, and he showed them to the world. His playing was 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 very clean uh, in 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 terms of you know of very very precise execution, and. Uh, you know, it, it, it was not a, like a rough, uh, rough and folky down to earth approach that, that Merle Travis had, although he also had brilliant, uh, brilliant musical ideas, right? So, uh, I believe that the 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 best thing is not to uh, not not to aim or compare your skills with anyone else, because if you if you want to do it and you keep searching and you try different things and you make something work and then fail and try something else, uh, you possibly discovered way, way more on your way than following instructions that will show you, well, this is, this is right. The thing is that uh, I haven't heard of anyone dying or getting injured by trying to play guitar and finding and discovering certain things. So uh, I truly believe that that having certain guidance, like okay, this is the idea, this these things work because of that. But I usually uh, I usually focus on that there there are plenty of ways. I know a couple of doing certain things that I do. I've seen it being done the other way. I'm left-handed, someone else is maybe right-handed, it works for them. Maybe they perceive things differently. Uh, maybe their perception of melody and harmony is different. And, you know, certain things just, just resonate with them better. They hear things in a certain way and they can detect it right away and, 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 and they, they're they just looking at different spots, right? So, uh, I basically, uh, in terms in terms of of this finger picking and and uh, arrangements and chords and everything, uh, I have a very very open idea about that. So, um, for example, I listen to the recording. I time stretch it because I'm very slow in terms of processing things. I don't. I mean, I I have a relative relative pitch. So I can tell the intervals, I can tell the melodies, I can repeat the melody when I play. Uh, I hear chord progressions quite well. I'm not that great in hearing complex chords, but again, uh, you can you can come from the assumption that it was someone who had who had five fingers on both hands, and if they're in star note tuning, there is there isn't anything superhuman that they can do, right? Uh, so so so. Um, you know, if chord sounds ordinary, it's possibly some ordinary chord. If you can detect just three groups of chords when you when you learn the quality, okay, that this okay, so I, this is major, right? This is this is this is major with six. This thing, this is major seven. This is a Mr. Sandman chord. Slightly, slightly out of tune, my fault. I was bending a lot. Uh, this thing has six and nine, right? So it's this is like a, th these are all one chords. These are major chords, basically. They have a major quality and they have something extra that, that adds the flavor. Then you have minor chords, minor seven chord, minor six, minor six. Minor six and minor nine, but but again, it has the minor quality. And there's a third chord, which is dominant chord. So everything that is not major and minor possibly is a dominant. So you'll 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 have this thing or 
this thing or some sort of altered chord, right? You you may have you may have diminished chord, which is which is also a dominant. It's actually one one diminished chord is four different dominant. It can it it contains four different dominant chords, but it it it's, it's it, it it doesn't matter. Uh, it's it's like a it's a, like elimination and discovery. If if something sounds familiar, you can you can pinpoint it onto what you already know. Uh, if something if, if 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 something sounds okay, this this is possibly a major chord. I, I can play major chord over it, and it contains all the qualities, and there is a melody on top of that. It's 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 possibly so, something something that is perfectly playable, right? Uh, but you know, on the opposite end, if you have a notation and a tab and you figure out, okay, this is where I put my fingers and it makes a sound and this is where the discovery ends, basically. You reach the point uh, and you play the song and that's it. And some people basically aim for that. They just want to play the song and go home. And then when they play another song, they don't see uh, any connection between what they learned in the previous song, and these are usually pretty much it's it's the same language, same style language, right? So you have you have a you have the same chord quality, like a six chord, but in different position. Whenever, whenever I deconstruct any tune on my channel, which I don't really do much because uh, I know there are people uh, coming to, to to the channel because they want to learn a particular song, and when I was when I was teaching in real life, uh, I was lucky enough to work with very very talented people, both children, adults people in their 60s and 70s that had this natural curiosity and they just wanted to go way beyond that because honestly uh, tabs and notations and free YouTube videos are out there if you want to learn how to play a tune someone already showed that and they did a great job and they didn't they, they didn't they didn't bother to you know to to go a step further and uh, and just break it down so that you can get everything that is in this tune and use it everywhere else to make your own tunes to play a part in the band to analyze something and learn by ear to get a new tune and new notation and see okay this is this is pretty much you know something like that it has a progression that has say one chord, then is a five chord, then is a one chord, and I know where my one chords and my five chords are because previous tune had also some one chords and five chords, right? Maybe it was in a different key, but most of the cases with with finger picking tunes, uh, the keys use open strings because this is very convenient. I can use my open strings as my as, as my uh, as my bass line, right? So, if say I, I got a blues shuffle, something very, very simple. What would be my key of choice? Well, my first key of choice is obviously A. Why? Because I have A as a bass note, D for my four, and E for my five. And right now, with two fingers and one interval, I can I can make a complete blues backing. so on and so forth right so I I can use this
and so on and so forth. You know, from from, from a <sighs> Yes, I believe you absolutely can. Uh, it's just uh, you know about a, about positive perception of, of 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 where you're going. That this is you know playing music is a journey for everyone, for everyone. It's and it's every, everything that comes along the way. Everything that is you know every challenge. Is something that, that that brings something new, and uh, I truly believe that that the best thing that you can do to yourself as a player is take your time, explore different sources, and try to try to translate everything that works musically for you into something of your very very own. Name things as you like make them your own make them very very familiar to you and and it will do a great things to you a lot a lot more in the same time that you would spend just by by learning and memorizing you're understanding the inner workings which is which is the key thing i mean it's it, 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 it's it's it, this is the only shortcut in music that there really is getting in the mind of uh, of someone who wrote the tune and trying to understand where it comes from and uh, you know, uh, for example, one of the uh, one one of the flashy tunes uh, that Brent Mason had a couple of years ago on one of his albums. It's called Hot Wired. Uh, for someone who's getting into country guitar and he sees this thing for the first time, it's like. I have no idea where it's coming from, right? Because the melody sounds like a pentatonic, but the way it's executed... Oh. Twelve won't help. So... thing uh, it's 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 a pentatonic line but because it's played with the uh, with the rolls with with, with finger picking the melody is spread onto strings and it's very unusual for something who played anything else before it's just like why like Positions that that usually blues, blues, blues and rock players play, it just doesn't make sense, right? But it's for particular sound and particular technical aspect of it all that this melody is spread onto 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 pairs of strings. So I have fifth and eighth fret on first and second string, and then open string. first phrase, right? Okay, so this, it, it looks hard, but uh, about 30 years, well, 20, 20, 20, 30 years before that, Jerry Reed and Chad Atkins played Jerry's Breakdown, which pretty much incorporates the same technical aspect. So, if you know how Jerry break, breaks down be, be, being played, and if you if you approach it with this very analytical way, this phrase starts looking very very familiar. It's the same idea of spreading the the melody and incorporate open strings when you can, because. Uh, the, the 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 whole idea uh, of this kind of playing, where, where where I believe it comes from, where it led me, right? That basically, 
let's let's start with a with a with a flat pick. What the flat pick is great for? Well, playing the same string a couple of times is very very precise, right? I can do very very little very precise movement with a pick. I can what can I do? I can I can sweep with a pick. But when it comes to string skipping, I need to really work hard to be precise because I have vast distances to cover here between the strings. Uh, okay, so why even bother? I I have extra fingers, so. My pick doesn't do that that much of a s s skipping right now, right? But so, oh, and and working hard with it with your picking hand. Okay, so we figured out that that skipping strings is not something that 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 flat flat pick likes. It doesn't mean it's impossible. It's just it just puts you in a certain mindset of playing across the neck in closed position, very precise, right? So if I want to play a couple of notes, this is very easy with the flat pick. When I want to do the same thing with the thumb pick. It's a different story because suddenly I don't have my upstroke really. Upstroke with a with, with a uh, thumb pick is very uncontrollable. Suddenly I play way louder. Why? Because this thing doesn't flex. When I play with a pick, I allow it to flex a little bit. That's that's how I play. I don't hold it. It's not it's not rigid. Right? Otherwise, it, it would sound like this. I I have control over this. If I want to get the snappy sound, I just group it a bit harder. But by default, I allow the pick to work. I hold it very, very lightly, right? So if I switch to thumb pick, I lose this thing. It's f it's Firmly fixed to my thumb. Uh, so this thing is pretty much out the window. In very particular situations, if I if I want to get very loud sound, I can get it with thumping, but this is the first limitation. So how can I replace this? Okay, I have my fingers. Uh, so suddenly. If I just want to substitute my downstroke with my thumb and upstroke with my finger, suddenly the thumb, thumb and and index finger they kind of cross the same plane. They are not really that great in working together, and they change the balance of the whole hand, and it makes it very. Very hard. So suddenly, I need to split it onto more fingers on my three fingers. And suddenly, it turns out that the, the roll playing with with consecutive fingers makes way more sense than trying to trying to stick to, to just two, right? And even worse thing, with flat pick, by default, my first strike on on uh, on the fundamental. Uh, F f f fundamental uh, beat of the bar is downstroke. One, two, three, four, five. And I try to keep it as an alternate picking, so it makes sense because I have even 
even amounts of say eight notes or 16 notes in a bar it helps me keeping my pulse even if i don't play them right so if i if i have my quarter notes one two three four eight notes so one two three four so every one two three four is still upstroke right okay with this thing the game is completely different because I can start with any finger I wish. I like starting with index finger or with middle finger, my lines, depending on where I am. Sometimes I like to keep keep orders of my finger index, index, thumb, middle. So it's index, thumb, middle, index, thumb. I start thinking about it I start making mistakes because when I play I usually don't tend to think about that so what what is a great thing about thumb pick that it gives you different tonality but completely different set of ideas how you can work towards that so suddenly when you have a line like Jerry's breakdown or 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 uh, hot wired by Brent Mason when you look at the picking hand, it suddenly makes perfect sense that these notes are laid on, a, on different strings because it's easier to play a series of strings with your right hand than to play the same notes in the same place. You know, like on the same string, same single string, right? It's just, it just not, not naturally, it just makes more sense. I could figure out Hot Wired by Brent Mason because I spent enough time on Jerry's breakdown and trying to break it down <laughs> and Jerry it up uh, just to just to see what's going on in there and why. And then I I took my flat pick detox for a couple of weeks and I just went like full full blown all in I started playing gigs just having a thumb pick it was a nightmare because I had to play some some lines that I've never played with fingers it was very very hard but it was just trying to incorporate this technique on spot and just I mean it's like it's my call now I need to make it work and I just I just played everything I, I, I played uh, you know, with 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 uh, some, I put some jazz gigs with a thumb pick, which is pretty much unheard of. I mean, Lenny Bro played with play, played jazz with thumb pick, but it's but it's like a, not something to to be expected. So on on chords it was cool because it it just worked it worked just fine. But with lines, It's 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 just a different it's a different set of things. It just flexes the muscle in your, muscles in your brain that you even didn't know that you had, and uh, I just uh, I I just love this kind of you, you know like 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 putting the these opposite uh, opposite ends of musical styles and and guitar techniques and see what the outcome is. It's, it's, sometimes it's not worth it, sometimes it's a failed experiment, but I tried and I possibly learned something along the way. But uh, most of the time I play with the thumb pick and fingers. It's not too precise, it's not the cleanest sound uh, and not the consistent sound, because, well, every finger sounds a little bit different, adding to that position of the, of the picking hand.
but uh, it's also really really great to overcome certain limitations of a flat pick like like playing skips between between strings because it doesn't care if you want to if you want to play two different strings that's it i mean <laughs> Instead of instead of playing tremolo up and down with, with the flat pick, you, you can you can roll your fingers. Again, there is no problem with string skipping at this point, right? So, so, so that's another thing. I mean, there's, there's, there's so much to discover. There's, there's so, so many absolutely comparing to anyone. Because again, if you, if you take on finger picking, you all, you are already better than the guys that don't do it at all and still play guitar. It's like the same discipline, right? I mean, we all play the same ball, <laughs> but suddenly you're doing something different than when, uh, than everyone else, right? Uh, Another thing that, that that I absolutely love is is uh, discovering different voicings of chords that that, that basically are uh, that that have closed intervals because what what a guitar is really bad at and the piano is really good at if you if you sit on a piano you can play all the keys at once I mean if you if you play C D E F G or you just lay down your hand hand flat on the keyboard all these notes will sound to make something like that on the guitar is very hard because we would need a very serious stretch right so c d e f that's pretty much what we can what, what we can do but if we want to incorporate something like that in chords it suddenly gets way trickier uh, why would we want to incorporate something like that in chords? Well, again, just to extend possibilities and tonalities. Sometimes you can just get bored with... ...with the chords that everyone plays always, right? Uh, no matter how nice they are, sometimes, sometimes they, you know, it's, it's all there is to it. But... Uh, it's 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 um uh, it's a kind of a bit of a of a stretch but i really i really like to keep in mind that there's still something like that uh and i mean that the uh, strings of a guitar played in this particular order so it's e g a b d e so basically i'm 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 playing 6th, 3rd, 5th, 2nd, 4th, 1st. These notes, they, they, they don't really sound like anything useful, right? Okay, I'll play these same notes, but in the same octave. And suddenly it's a, it's a minor pentatonic, right? Very, very useful sound. Okay, so, all I need to do is to take the notes that are on the lower strings, an octave higher, right? Well, that sounds more like it. And because it's an octave, I can use harmonics, natural harmonics. Okay, if I can do something like this in open position, I can take it 
onto any fret. So say I'm, I'll put it, I, I'll put a bar across fifth fret, and now I'm going to use artificial harmonics. So what I'm doing in here, I'll get a better angle maybe. Okay, I'm just putting my fingers 12th, 12th fret higher than from what I'm fretting. So I imagine that this is my another small guitar. This is where I hold my position. So it's basically, this is my big fifth fret, this is my small fifth fret. And I put my finger on top of the small fret in here and I pluck the harmonic with my thumb behind behind the string. Okay, and and because you, you, you can hear it all the time and it's it's, it's a sound that, that that like I mean the, 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 it's it's nice but when it's overused it's overused, right? But we can combine these with fretted strings. So I just showed you that we have minor pentatonic in here. So here is here's a different thing. I play artificial harmonic, third string, artificial harmonic on fifth string, second string, artificial harmonic on fourth string, and first string. So Okay, now I can make it more interesting. I can put my finger on the sixth fret here and do the same thing. Okay, so the interesting thing is that right now I have notes that are very close together. So I can think of a chord, say, I want to play something like this. Um, I want to have these all, all these notes together at the same time. C, D, E, A. So, okay, I, what I could do, I can maybe play this D here. C, C, D. Okay, this is, this is not too comfortable, right? And it's... It's, it's, it's also a bit harder to execute. Let's see if I can pretty much get the same thing by using this technique, right? So I got C, D, E, A. I play my D an octave lower and I shift it with the harmonic. I can play all, play them all at once. If I practice hard enough, which I don't. But again, there's a way. I mean, this one is nice, right? F major seven. Again, I just plug these strings with my finger and. And add a harmonic on top of that. I can use these harmonics even to 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 play like a strummed chord, right? I don't have to plug them one by one. I can I can just lead with my thumb pick. My thumb pick is a little bit ahead of my index finger. I can play different shapes. I can I can run across, right? For certain chord shapes like this one, for example, this is a C69 chord. So it's it's notes from the from, uh, from the top, top string to bottom. It's a C G D N A. So it's uh, to first two strings on 8th fret and middle strings on 7th fret. And although this is not the same fret, I don't have to be... I don't have to be too, too precise with my harmonics. 
I can just I can just run across slightly across with my finger. And if at first they don't make the right sound, it usually means that you need to uh, advance your ignition. <laughs> and check the timing belt. Uh, we want we want to have our thumb a bit ahead of the finger. It will it will help a bit. For example, right. So again, it's uh, for the chords that that are like 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 just complete bar. Uh, what I like to do is using my thumb across the fret and strum and strum with my fingers. So I can I, I can tap to get the same same thing going, right? But it's less precise and it will make other strings ring. But it, again, it's it's something that, that can could be used. Right? So this, this 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 kind of thing works also. So it's just about about the discovery process, really. I mean, that's that's the most joyful joyful part of it all, I believe. Okay. So I'm really glad that I wanted to talk about boring stuff, about drilling holes and cutting shapes and making a pine guitar uh, from. Uh, from some random cheap parts and ended up with a great guitar that inspires me to talk about music and make music and show what I can what I can what I like working on uh, so if if you guys found it helpful in any way I'm really glad and really happy about that and also i'll always be happy to do regular right live streams because right now at the current situation with the current struggle and very uncertain everything and me not having gigs and everything uh i don't really have a regular plan to do any any kind of lessons as such especially that my channel is very small and uh, basically youtube doesn't really care about educational content so I can end up spending like a day or two researching something and recording video and making a notation and uh, during the year I'm gonna get may maybe like a well, 80 views, may maybe 60, right? Because I'll, YouTube won't promote these things. So I truly prefer to have to, to do little live streams which are a bit all over the place but if I can answer the questions and if I can maybe inspire something you know, j j j just come up with some idea. Uh, I'm always happy to do so because it's 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 about interaction, and I love being being triggered by certain questions, by certain ideas, and and again, you know, just 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 uh, helping with some exploration because it's it's a cool thing. It's it's the greatest part of it all. It's it's just about exploring different different aspects and s seeing what. Uh, what every one of us, you know, can uh, bring to the table, and all the all the great ideas, and and and, and uh, all the musical questions. So there are certain things that I I can't really think of when I when I, when I think about you know making like a proper video or a video lesson or anything. I tend to lean on 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 just popular topics, uh, but again, it kind of dissolves the idea of. Of solving particular problems, right? Every, uh, you know, internet is constructed around either playing cover tunes or learning popular songs. Uh, none of it, none, 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 none of these things are, are, are really my cup of tea by uh, by any shot. So I would prefer to do regular live streams and answer the questions and maybe help with something, maybe show some sources. If I don't know something, I usually know where to look, right? So that's a that's a great thing. Sometimes, you know, even the most difficult techniques on a guitar or understanding something, you know, theory-wise or or, or 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 in terms of techniques, everything could be learned. Maybe not. I mean, not everything at once, right? 
because there is a vast amount of it but it 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 doesn't mean uh, that it's not worth trying it's, it's there's there's always something something cool to do and uh, I, I i believe there is no there's there's no dark magic behind that and the guys uh, who came up with certain things should get a credit if we just learn technique that someone else is using it well it kind of takes the magic away but if we learn these techniques to do our own stuff to work on a you know, on a personal style i think that's 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 the goal being being true to your idea of being a musician you know that's no matter what level no matter if it's a being a professional musician or mu musician or someone who just does it for for, for a pure pure love of, of of the matter so yeah okay i hope that uh this little little rumble helped anyone if if that's so i'm really really happy about it thanks guys for being here tonight it was really really great having you and uh, I'll try to show up on a on a regular basis and just bring your questions whatever it is there is you know if it's if it's something like like theory or how to practice certain things or I tried something but it didn't work for me do you have any other way of doing it you know I'll be really really happy to answer it's something that I've been doing for past 20 years but you know on a face-to-face -face basis and uh, also the, the 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 thing is that I uh, tried most of the stuff out there in a real life world you know world situations and playing gigs and touring and uh, working out certain things that that allowed me to uh, to, 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 to thrive through some very very hectic schedules and learn certain things because I have a terrible memory although I've been playing music for a long time so I had to understand progressions I had to memorize line in a, a bit different way if I knew where it was coming from it was way easier for me than just okay this is you know A, G and A flat and D and C but then on the second time it, it, didn't, it never worked for me this way it is just about hearing the music and reacting and uh, you know when you have certain help from knowing basic theory and and by theory i don't i i don't mean anything hardcore it's just hearing progressions you know where the chords go and if they go in a certain way what can you do with it how to solo and improvise how to play always something different how to stick to the style where the elements of the style that make it special you know the, the, this kind of thing i mean again this is this, this, this is something that uh i've been doing for a living for for a while and uh, uh and also also teaching this this stuff so yeah all right guys thank you so much uh it's been always pleasure les cornholio you guys are stars keep going keep doing beautiful things music is a beautiful 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 greatest thing in the world and uh, yeah well it's time to say goodbye and i have a picture of a dog eating very particular aerodrome, aerodrome charge for you stay safe